Mm -hmm. oh, Hi, family. Welcome back to another episode of Jordan's Journey Podcast. This is real life, real people, real testimonies. And today we have another special guest with us. Her name is Teresa. Welcome, Teresa. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so of excited. Of course. <laughs> so, Yay. Tell us, okay, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where are you calling in from today? Where are you joining us from? Okay, so today I'm calling in from Houston, Texas. Um, Houston in the building. Yay. So um, I've been here for three years. I'm from Louisiana, Morgan City. Um, it's not too far from New Orleans. So, mm. yes. so I'm excited to be here. Okay, and so... Let's get right into it. When did you come to the realization that there was a God? Mm -hmm. What happened? And take us back to that day. Yes, absolutely. So I I grew up in church. Um, so I was I was the girl who was at Sunday school and at um, vacation Bible school and you know everything that was about church i'm talking about congress everything that they had going on i was i was the um the girl that was there um i made sure that we always was in church but of course you know at that time you don't really you know you just go to church you just go through the motions so I always had a feeling, you know, I felt that I was always okay. Like, I just felt like everything was just always okay. But I went through a lot of stuff when I was growing up with my mom and my dad. But I always just had a sense of I was okay. But I di it didn't hit until um, three years ago. My son had an incident. And it really, that's when I, I really changed like it changed my whole life my son um he had a little hospital incident and that really made me wake up so before then i was doing a little drugs i was um selling i was in that world and i i guess when that happened it really hit me like okay it's time for you to stop it's time for you to pick change your life around it's time for you to get yourself okay, so if we can just pause right there so you you were were you like considered like in the streets you were using drugs you were selling drugs yes i was okay and then your son had an incident yeah he had to be hospitalized yes can you go into detail what happened or he was just sick or oh he actually had an incident where he was um out with his father and his brothers and his brothers end up going to like this um this workout facility and they snuck in the facility and he ended up getting on a treadmill. So he was like maybe five years old at this time. Mm -hmm. And his brothers, um, he was on a treadmill and, and, and they, I guess, speed, sped it up. Like they were speeding up the treadmill. So he fell and scraped all his face up and his neck and everything. Wow. That did it. Like, mm -hmm. I, oh no, like, I, I mean, that completely took me for a loop, threw me, threw me for a loop. So, and so what happened once the incident happened? So I completely slowed my life down, like completely everything that I had, you know, with the, you know, drugs and everything. I threw everything away that night. I, so you didn't have to go to rehab. You didn't have to like do the 12 steps to recovery. I did not. I did not go to rehab. I literally shut my life down. Like I threw everything away that I had so far as drugs. I completely because I was about to go over. Like it was I was on my way to his dad's house and I'm I'm ready to, you know, fight and you know, fuss. And something told me to turn around. Like turn around because either somebody's gonna get hurt or I was gonna end up in jail. And mm. ever since that night, like I was like, it's going to be me or my son. And I choose to, you know, my son, like, no, I, I can't do this. So, mm. yes. That's so good. And how's your son doing today? Just curious. He is doing good. He's very active. He's very active. He's a boy. Everybody always. Yeah. My uh, first child is a girl. She's 17 and my little boy, he's 10 years old. But everybody always say, well, he's a boy, you know, he's just being a boy. And I'm like, they, they 
girls and boys. Oh my God. So, okay. so you, your son had the incident, you left the drugs alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? How did, what happened with your relationship with God? Were you seeking God more? Oh, yes. Yes. Spirit, um, honestly, it came over me, like, because I completely stopped cold turkey, because I'm the type of person, you know, when I make my mind up and do something, I, I do it. That's what I, that's what happened. Like, I really shut down, and the Holy Spirit came over me, and I, mm -hmm. that night, like it was yesterday, I cried so much, like, for a whole, mm -hmm. was in the house, crying, and asking God to forgive me, and ever since then, it's just been a journey. I went up like I had lost my job. <laughs> I had before then I had lost my job because, you know, I was in that world. So I had lost my job. Um, I wasn't going to school or anything. I was just in that world. And once I decided to, you know, stop and change my life around, I end up enrolling back into school. I end up getting my job back. Now, this has been a whole year in six months. Right. So after a year and six months, that's when, you know, it hit. My son had the incident and I was like, okay, this is enough. Like, this is not me. Because before then I was a teacher. Um, I worked at the hospital, at the hospital as a registration clerk. So I, you know, I was good for myself. It's just that his dad, me and his dad was in a relationship for six years and me and him separated and I went down after that. Okay, because so when you say you went down, is that when you started the drug abuse or started already in using drugs at that point? I was not. When it was me and his dad together for six years, and I was like a housewife. So he he was the provider. He was everything. It was kind of a abusive relationship, not physically, but mentally. So after six years, you know, at his child and I, you know, when we separated, he basically drugged me through the mud after that. It was just like, you was nothing like for six years. Like, it's like he stole my identity, like stole my time and everything. And I went down after that. I, I, I left with nothing. I separated from that relationship with nothing, like no money, no anything. So I kind of, I guess I fell into a depression. Mm -hmm. So. And so you're, you, you separated from your child's father and then yes, you started using drugs. Yes. And then your son had that incident. Yes. I started using drugs, lost my job. Um, my son had that incident and then that's when everything flipped. I was everything like flipped. So let's talk about the flip. <laughs> Let's talk about how everything flipped because sometimes we have to experience you know, certain things and experiences so God can redirect us yes. back on the path that he originally intended for us. So let's talk about the flip. What happened there? So, so the flip so far is? As far as, okay, so now you found God. You cry right. out, you surrender, you yes. sobered up. So what happened from there? I attended church every day that year for a whole year. I got baptized again. Um, I, I joined the dance team at church. So I put my, I got myself back into, you know, a healthy environment, yes. surrounded by good community, good yes. people. Okay. Yeah. Um, I shut down. Um, I was going out a lot. So I shut everything down and just started redirecting. Like I said, I got my job back. Um, I enrolled myself back into school and I started, like I said, I started going to church and I got baptized and everything. So I, yeah. Yeah. so I got back on that, the right path. Okay. And so where are you today as far as on your path, on your journey? Oh, girl. Okay. So after, you know, maybe about, I think a year, about a year and something, I was still, you know, I ended up getting my job back. I ended up graduating um, from the university when I enrolled myself back into college. And a year and three months from there, I moved to Houston. Mm -hmm. so I did not have no idea I was going to move to Houston. Like, my plans was, I'm from Louisiana, so that's five hours away from here. I can hear your accent from, I thought it was New Orleans. Oh, yeah, New Orleans. Is, is yeah. New Orleans, Louisiana? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can hear the New Orleans thing. 
Yes, girl. So I was trying to move somewhere in New Orleans or Lafayette, somewhere in that area, because that's where all my help was. You know, I have my daughter and my son. So um, I was trying to find somewhere, trying to buy me a house. And God was like, no, nothing was working out. Like, I mean, I would find a house after house. And just for some reason, it just was not working out for some reason. So he, um, one of my old friends, she was like, why you don't come move to Houston? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't have no family. I don't have no help. And girl, lo and behold, I applied for a job as a teacher and I got the job like this. Where did you apply for the job? What city was it located? It was in Houston, Texas. Wow. Girl, I was so afraid. I was like, oh my goodness. Like, God, you know, you didn't say nothing about Houston. Like, he gave me time, you know, to get myself together a whole month. Um, I came down here a month ahead of time to get my apartment, pay for everything, was ready. And I was this. I was a fr terrified because I've never lived that far away from my family. And that's what my help was. And God was like, no, I got something else for you. Something bigger than Lafayette, something bigger than New Orleans. Mm -hmm. He said, he was the text. And I was like, okay. So when I tell you my hormones, everything, my body, the, it, I mean, just was off for a whole month. I, I think I cried so hard when I moved to Houston. I was so afraid. But girl, th fast forward three years from now, from then. Matter of fact, October fifth has been three years, and I made it this far. Wow! <laughs> wow! It's so like I can cry just thinking about you know times when I was like, God, you know that the rent is like a thousand dollars. Like how in the world am I, I've never paid rent this much, but I've never been late on my rent, never been, nothing, never ever been turned off. And as a teacher, you don't make too much. So I, I wow. Because he still provides, you know, yeah. when you're in the obedient, when you're being obedient, you know, I always talk about the difference between grace and favor, because yeah. when you're in the world, we're all covered by grace. Yeah. But when you get into alignment, and, you know, your surrender, you really experience the favor of God in your life and how, like, you're literally moving mountains, like things mm -hmm. that you thought you would never be able to do, you're doing, yes. you know, paying high rent, you know, <laughs> even me in California, you know, I'm just like, this is, and I've never, you know, lived on my own. I'm like, this is going to be an experience. Yes. Yes. You know, and here we are four years later and God has been sustaining and providing. So it's just so interesting when you're obedient and he told you to leave your hometown to a place like he told Abraham to a place where I'm going to show you in the land of milk and honey. So he wasn't trying to establish you mm -hmm. in New Orleans. He said, you have to go. You have to go and, and really experience me for yourself. Oh, and so. How was that experience? You know, you've been there three years, so I know you got to experience God in a whole new way, in a whole new level. So what was that like for you? Absolutely. It was, it, it, it honestly was um, mind blowing because it's like a whole nother, like when you in tune and you can, and you start to hear, you know, the voice of God, it's, it's mind blowing because it's like, and he remind he confirms everything. Like I, you know, it's it's just like no such thing as a coincidence type situation. Like, you know, I would be so he would. Let's see. How can I? It's so hard for me to even describe. Like, it, I'm going to sound crazy if I describe like the things that he would do. But, you know, so far as, you know, when he would tell me something like I get on YouTube, you know, maybe hear one of you guys videos and it would just be so much what God had just told me, like, oh, my God, like you just said that I just heard that and you would just confirm it. So to me, it's so mind blowing because I've never experienced, you know, um, anything like that because I was right. like, oh, girl, like I would just be, you know, my mind was not on those, you know, details, you know. It's like I just was not there, you know. Yeah, you're in the kingdom now. You're in the kingdom, <laughs> like you're, and you go from the world from the kingdom. And a lot of times when God is ushering us into the kingdom and transitioning us into the kingdom, you have to relocate because yes. you have to unlearn everything and you have to get into a different environment with less distraction, mm -hmm. where where your mind, where you can declutter your mind, and He can really show you who He is. 
Mm, and he definitely did. He definitely did because I will always listen to my mom. That was like my Lord, you know. Yeah. And, and it's amazing how even our parents, like people who we love, our boyfriends, mm -hmm. husbands, can mm -hmm. be idols, and we don't mm -hmm. even know. And then God has to remove it, and we're like, "What happened?" And it was like, That's "What's an idol?" Major thing for me when I moved down here, God started moving things around and moving people around and showing me different people, like friendships that I had, I no longer had, and I grieved that. You know, I felt so horrible, like, oh, my God, they're going to think that, you know, I'm acting funny and, you know, but, girl, he started to put people in a place. And I, I grieved that for a long time, you know, because I'm like, that's my mom, though, father. And, you know, that's that's my that was my friend. We grew up together and he started and I started seeing he started revealing true people true colors. Like, I don't know, my perspective changed and I'm like, well, they change and and it's like. He, it's like he was saying, they always been this person, but because my perspective has changed, it's now I can see. Now yeah. I can see now. You know, yeah. so that that was mind-blowing. I mean, it, I grieved a lot, though. Like, I cried a lot, for, especially the first year. You know, I tried not to go back. Even when I would go back home, I'd be so nervous to go home. Like, I don't want to see nobody. I stay at my mom's house and I was scared to, you know, go out. But it's better now. What were you grieving? Just the loss of not, you know, I, I girl, I come, when I was in that world, I, I must have had like, you know, I was the, the party girl. I'm the girl mm -hmm. every. All like, where we going today? Where we going this weekend? You know, who we riding with? I'm, I'm, that's me. I, I was killed all of that. <laughs> I had the car. You know, yeah. It was me. So I left a lot of people behind. Mm -hmm. So that makes me want to cry. But um, yeah. But he tells us, you know, when those who leave their families, they're behind mm -hmm. for his kingdom. Yeah you know, there's a reward. He mm -hmm. rewards us for our obedience, for leaving everything we know and then walking into the unknown. And it's like, yeah. and then you go through this crushing and then you start mourning yourself because you're that no longer fits into mm -hmm. what God is doing. Right. You have right. to become this different person. Yes. And it's, there is a mourning process of grieving Yes, girl. Of your old self and your old ways. But when you come out on the other side, baby, <laughs> it's so worth it. So. That makes me mad. Because I know God, you know, and I always say, you know, Father, I want what you have for me. You know, I know what I want for me. And that, it didn't work. I tried everything. <laughs> I tried everything, you know, to make it work, to, you know, to put me in a place where I'm, where I can sustain myself. And I failed many times. So I just was like, I surrender. I can't, I, I, I tried everything. And there was nobody, it's, it's nobody greater. You know, I, I then had the men and I did it all. And nothing is greater than what God has, just the little bit that he's done. In the three years that I've been in Houston, nothing compares to it. Mm. So, um, it's 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 getting easier now. It's a journey, though. It's not easy, <laughs> but it's it's definitely a journey. And it's many nights I cried, many many nights. I still cry almost every morning. I wake up crying, you know. But is it tears of joy or tears. What are the tears that you're? It crying? is joy. It is joy because I cannot believe that you know. Sometimes you know when you're walking with God, it's like me, Father. Like you want me. Like out of all the people, like me, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, father. Like I, you just don't. It's like he had to convince me that I'm special. That yeah. you're enough because I'm like, you know, you just cannot believe that. You know, when people say you're the, you know, you hear you're the chosen one, and God is doing a new thing in your life. It's like not me, you know. So he, it took a while to convince me that I'm like I'm enough. Like I'm worthy. So it's it's a lot of phases I went through, you know, not, you know, because when I was in that world, you know, you get crushed on, you know, people take advantage of you and you just don't feel like you're good enough. Like not anymore. Like after all these people, all these people done like so far that if I'm, I'm the chosen one, if I'm great, if I'm good, if I'm enough, then why all this happened? You know, all these people, 
you know, some, I just, I had to, I had to go through. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people struggle with feeling unworthy, like feeling unworthy of the blessings mm -hmm. that God is giving them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the enemy can make you feel shame. Like, look at what you did in the past and look what, what you were indulging in. And, you know, like you don't deserve what mm -hmm. God is doing. And then even imposter syndrome, you know, that was a, a new thing oh, yeah. where you just feel like a fraud. Like, <laughs> is this even, so did you experience imposter oh, yes. syndrome? Definitely experience the imposter. Like I, girl, let me tell you, like, you know, when I first moved here and I started my job, I would always feel like I had to, um, let's see, like confirm. I had to make sure, like I was put in a position where I was over money and I was over certain things at my job. And I just wanted to always assure the person like, okay, like you're going to get your money at this time. You're going to, and I just felt like something would always come over me like, girl, like they don't trust you. Oh, uh, who do you think you are? You know, and that I dealt with that. <laughs> that was another thing I had to deal with. Um, but I've never stole anything, but it just always felt like Yeah, that's the battle of fear. the mind. That that yeah. is the attack from the enemy because you know, fear doesn't come from God. He tells yeah. us says, I did not give you the spirit mm -hmm. of fear, but of love, power, and of sound mind. Mm -hmm. So if you are fearful, mm -hmm. you know that's a, that's from the other kingdom. That's another spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. Right. And so um, we have to, you know, when that happens, we have to be able to rebuke that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when we have to, you know, the Bible tells us there is life and death in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so we have to kill that by speaking the word of God and the promises. You know, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Mm. And you know, encouraging us and stirring ourselves up. Yes, yes. Okay. You know, in the word of God. So how did you overcome that feeling of unworthiness and imposter syndrome as God is, you know, blessing you and ultimately showing you a new life? Girl, I tell you, every day I wake up, like I'm listening to a sermon, I'm listening to some type of motivational speech. Every day since I moved to Houston, I've never, not one day went by, I haven't listened to a sermon. So I felt, I always felt like, so at one point, recently it got to the point where like, okay, so are you trying to convince yourself? Like I had to stop because I was in so much because I guess I still had the thoughts in my head, like you, you're not changed. You're still the same or you know, so I'm like, am I just trying to convince my, I was, I would overwhelm myself so much because I was afraid that I, I was going to go back to who I was. So I was always, I would question myself, like, why are you listening to this and why? But every day, you know, I would be in tune and listening so much to where, to where, you know, my kids would just be like, you know, mom, you should go join one of the nun, um, <laughs> <laughs> you should go be a nun. And I'm like, that. I just was afraid that, it, like, I don't want to go back to the person I used to be and go, like, you're good. Like, you're good. You know, you're fine. Chill out. Like, <laughs> but I would be so afraid. Like, that's another reason why I didn't want to go home. So Right. And sometimes there's two things that I wanted to talk about. But mm -hmm. first, it reminded me when you said you went, you had to read scriptures and mm -hmm. listen to sermons every single day. And mm -hmm. it reminds me of the scripture that says, you know, you cannot live off of bread alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't just live off of food, but you have to feed yourself spiritually. Yeah. You know, and, and encourage your soul. And, and even going back. And I think because I got a lot of pressure, you know, when I relocated. Mm -hmm. my family to come back and visit but it's like when it's time mm -hmm. like I'm still going through my process my pruning, my purging and I need to make sure that I am spiritually developed to be able to shield mm -hmm. myself from yes. certain things Yes, from you know my past environment yes, yes so yes. I can see how you were, you know, didn't want to go back home and you know, afraid of backsliding or going mm -hmm. back 
So have you been back home since you've relocated? Yes, I've been back home. Um, I've probably been home like five times because sometimes I, I couldn't do it because I would go back home and around my family, you know, everybody will be smoking and stuff when I go back home. It surrounds me. Like I'm surrounded by what I used to be or who I used to be. You know, they got, it's just, it was easy access and so I would just be, you know, and then if I'm just sitting there, everybody looking at me, like, because they know I'm the life of the party. Like, I'm up, I'm, like, everywhere, I'm dancing, you know. So now when I go back home, you know, when I was to go back home, I would just be sitting there. And everybody just, like, what's the matter with you? Like, why are you? And I didn't, it just would just be so awkward. So I would be, I wouldn't go sometimes. So... That was the hard part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but when you do go, was there boundaries that you had to put in place or you, you're okay? Because you can get to a, a yeah. point where you're spiritually mature, mm -hmm. where, you know, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Like mm -hmm. you can be in certain environments and not, and let the environment consume you. Well, right? I, I did good um, since I'm to Houston and when I go home so I, I didn't engage um but now it's better um since I since I've been back home it's it's it's, it's better than what it used to be like I used to literally be praying all the way the ride all the way home like mm. nervous and you know not wanting nobody to judge me and even when I went home last time I think it's about a month ago I went home and I seen one of my friends who my lifelong friends um that I used to um hang with and she just was like you know you left like you know you changed you know you she was like it's just weird for us you know she was speaking for everybody I guess but bye <laughs> she was like it's just weird for you to you know for some one of us to just leave and not keep in touch like she will always like she told me she you know you come down here you don't even call us when you come home and I was just like oh my god but well and then there are certain people that just need to be removed for good mm. you know, like you just don't fit to where yeah. God is taking me some people are in your yeah. life for a season and a reason, mm -hmm. you know, it was fun while it lasted, but God bless, take care. Yeah. And we know you, we continue on our journey. Yes. So now you're in Houston. Yes. Are you teaching and you're teaching in Houston? Well, um, okay. I be <laughs> so, so what is God revealing to you about your life since you've been on your path, on your journey? So I discovered a lot about myself. Uh, I actually uh, was a teacher. So I, when I first moved, I was a teacher for like a year. You know, the pandemic hit right when I moved. So in 2019, um, so we was out of school for a while, but I did that for a year. And then I became a real estate agent here in Texas. Wow. Um, yes, girl. Oh, good. Congratulations. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, that is just the beginning. So I end up getting my license because I'm from Louisiana. I end up getting my license in Louisiana also. So now I'm a real estate agent in Louisiana also. And I'm a leasing manager here and I have 21 properties under my name. Um, wow. So I just been like, so like, I just, I can't. Mind blowing. <laughs> like, I have not seen ears of not heard what God does to those who love him in our yeah. yes and he he you know and he he didn't he never I never felt pressure like he will always give me time so when the pandemic hit that's when I registered in school and got my um classes to be a real estate agent and it's like he just always gave me time because I, he know I'm nervous like I'm impatient I'm you know I'm always like I gotta do this I gotta you know, he always would call me down. Girl, and when I first moved down here, I was trying to give me another job because I'm like, you know, father, this teaching job, there's not enough of money. And he would stop everything. He was like, no, it's no more chasing a the bag. There's no more, you know, trying to get, you know, the money so you can know. It, girl, it was so crazy how I would go to interviews and they would tell me to come to the interview and they wouldn't even be there. It's like, I would go to the interviews and they would just be like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm like, I talked to the guy yesterday, came here and he told me to come back tomorrow. And it's like, it will always fail. So yeah. I was like, 
oh okay father like he will always put me back in my place i used to be trying right to right and, that's, and i <laughs> love that because you know the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered sure. so your steps are ordered so even when you're like slid to the little bit to the left he brings you right back <laughs> on the path of righteousness on the narrow path <laughs> So there's not too many ways you can go. You just got to keep going straight and he brings you right back on the path. And it's like, okay. Yes. Yes, he did. They definitely did that. I would always try to get all, I will always, cause I'm always getting ahead of myself. And he right. was like, uh-uh, no, no, come, come back. And I'm like, but father, you know, I just, you know, I can help us out if, you know, if you need my help. <laughs> Give right. it five hundred dollars here and there he was like nope 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 i just need you to focus on you getting your inside get yourself together get your mind right because when i'm gonna take you you're gonna need you know to be in a different headspace and i was just like, i understand i can do that while i'm working too <laughs> he was like no yeah. So. yeah and that that's one of the things that you learn when you are transitioning from the world into the kingdom like you're not chasing after stuff you're not like working to pay for things and all that you you are stepping into things you're walking into things because you're in obedience so as you're on your walk and on your journey with god you're going to start walking into the things that you need to get to the next level yes and yes. so that's one of the main differences you know when you're in the kingdom and you're on your journey mm -hmm. yes absolutely i agree I, I i definitely got a whiff of that <laughs> <laughs> you have a wonderful story. You know, God has really shown up and shown out in your life. Yes. Um, and you will continue to see the glory of God in your life. And so what would be a takeaway that you will want somebody to take away from your story, from your journey? Don't give up. Like when God said he's going to do it, when you hear, you know, and then you get confirmation, girl, I'll use it, take it, lean on it, receive it. You know, it's like the word becomes and i would hear the same thing you know i've been hearing bible verses you know you hear scripture and everything throughout your life but when you really start to walk with god those words become alive like they 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 are alive like they are you know yes yeah, they are they said it's the living word that's word, girl, and i'm like i've been hearing this all my life but when it hit it hits different it hits different when you begin to walk with god it's like you heard it before but it comes alive and it makes you come up like it wakes me up it wakes me up you know to hear you know that and that's what keeps me going you know sometimes i will listen to a sermon and that'll hold me for the next week you know so keep going it you know as long as you want it you have to really want like i want to be with god like i want him to lead the way i don't want no other god before me my mother not nobody not my sister not no one so girl just it's the greatest feeling ever you know so and i cry i cry when i need to cry you know don't deny yourself from you know being vulnerable if you feel like you gotta cry cry you wake up like oh i've been crying all week oh well you know one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be smiling you're gonna be joyful it comes it goes and know that that's okay it's okay to cry like and that's just what that's what i come in with and that's what i would want somebody to leave with that it's okay you know, some days you're going to have bad days. Like, Father, I don't want to hit it today. I don't want to hit it. <laughs> but, you know, it's a journey. And keep going because every day, like, it gets, you know, the inside. I feel good about it now than what I felt three years ago when I first started. Yeah. When you first started, it's rough. <sighs> it's it really rough. is rough because you don't know anything. You don't and know. then you're, you don't really know God you know, your relation, your intimacy with God grows as you <clears throat> continue to go along. So at the beginning, you're like, God, it, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. What's going on? But <laughs> he still provides the manna, you know, even in that wilderness where you, when you don't know, he's still providing. He's yeah. still providing and protecting you from things seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. So absolutely That's i feel a wonderful thing about it i feel that mm -hmm. absolutely so where can we find you uh any social media any links or anything where I, you ooh, I was, well i'm on um instagram and facebook as teresa jennings it's okay. just I, I try to keep it very simple so right. 
my name, my first and my last name, Teresa, T-E-R-E-S-A Jennings, J-E-N-N-I-N-G-S on Facebook and Instagram. So, and that's it. You'll find me. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us today and taking the time out to share your journey, your story. I'm sure people will be blessed and encouraged. And until next time, family, we will see you in our next podcast episode. Bye, you guys. Thank you for having me.